Hello, hello, and welcome everybody to Hi. <laughs> the Sleeping Realm Theory stream. Here it is. We're here. It's happening. Finally. It's happening. Finally. We've actually been talking about doing this uh, <laughs> since last year. Some Something like that. I don't remember exactly when it was where I was like, I got updates to do. And you were like, when you do them, let's do a stream. And I was like, hell yeah. And then I didn't do them. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of information. It's it's a big job. Yeah, you got <laughs> telling me. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> no, really? It's, oh, um, man. yeah, let's see. Where did, where did we get when I just, like, fixed some stuff last night? Where are we at page count? Oh, 482 pages? 482. Not a big deal, though. Don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been quite an undertaking, especially, like, I would say since, like, a good majority of it was, like, written by me, but, like, when we first did it, I still had a lot more active help from, like, others who helped me with the document namely cal who is in the list we will see but like they've been like super busy and have school and stuff like that so most of like doc maintenance is me so like mm -hmm. any update for like a long time all of it's me like everything i've had to rearrange this entire document and oh i mean i God. like gutted chopped remixed this thing into like almost an entirely new uh, whole thing. <laughs> well, because you wrote this before Remind came out, before Melody mm -hmm. of Memory came out, right? Before so... the Ultimania came out, actually, for KH three is when oh, we wow. is when we dropped it. Yeah, that's. I think it. I wrote it in like the initial thing is that we were like initially getting it out, um, and we found out that the Ultimania was like dropping and like it was like guess what it's two days from now we we're like oh shit so we like really started to like blast it really hard um and we got it out like the day before but then of course like things started to trickle out very slowly um and we were like let's just see what stacks up we just wanted to see how well we did right and then like nothing was disproven and it felt like right. we're just standing on a house of cards that somehow hasn't fallen and that's still how it feels because we're just like when is, when's it gonna fucking collapse why right right so <laughs> oh my god yeah you you uh i mean you've worked so hard on this this is this is so cool because the first time i ever read this i like mm -hmm. no lifed it one evening for like five hours it took me five hours to go through the entire doc and that was like you know including like pacing around the room and like having my mind blown and like needing to breathe and get water before i can continue like oh my god this makes so much sense right and, <laughs> and like just being just like D oh this is what this is amazing like we're just blowing my mind wide open and i like it I just took to my <laughs> my entire evening that's why i love theories that's why i love theories because it just like it gives you a completely new perspective on this game that you already love mm -hmm. and these characters that you already love and it just it's new possibilities for yeah. their adventure and for their world and what's going on and and kingdom hearts is already a series that is so it's so i love that you can enjoy the kingdom hearts series just at, on a surface level on a baseline level if you want to you just take it for what it is and enjoy it yep and that's have fun amazing with a fun game just have know. fun with a fun game play it and be happy or you can choose to dive really as deep as you want and mm -hmm. just have just have layer another after side, layer another story if you will if you will <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so for for anybody who has never heard of this before and has no idea what we're about to get into what's like of we're i mean we're gonna basically make a audiobook for the sleeping realm theory tonight um as best we can as best it's we can long <laughs> it's uh th this is probably gonna take multiple streams because <laughs> yeah it's 483 pages mm -hmm. and um but what's like if you were to give like a one or two sentence, like what is this? What is the Sleeping Realm Theory? The Sleeping Realm Theory is the is. Give me a second. Sorry to what put you it on is, the spot. Is, no, 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 it's fine. I've thought about this before, but I'm just like, what's the best way I can? And then I stop myself again, being like, I can say it better. No, uh, it's basically uh, to boil it down is just what was introduced in the. 
It was introduced in the mobile slash browser game, okay? Um, is the idea of jumping world lines to go to another timeline, essentially, where bad things don't happen this time. And there are many, many a clue in Kingdom Hearts 3 that indicate that it happened exactly, but off screen, more or less. The Kingdom Hearts 3 is a second timeline of events. We did not see the first one. Yep. There you That's go. It. And this is something the series has already done. This is not just pulling it out of nowhere right. or just having fun with like, man, but what if it was all a dream? It's like, no, this is... This, this we is have the stuff. Rules. Yeah, we have the guidelines for this. <laughs> There's like, it's all here. Right. They probably are just doing it. <laughs> Again. Except for this one, this time, like, not so straightforward about it. And even the first time they did it was just kind of like, yeah, we're re releasing the browser game, but it's a mobile game now. And then as you kind of go through it, and you're like, this seems a little different. And then it is for a reason. <laughs> so. <laughs> <sighs> Crazy. Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. Why? <laughs> ah! This series. <laughs> it's just, it's really funny. I do see, like, often people who, like, just hear about it. They'll typically, like, or at least for a long time. I haven't seen it for a while. But because, like, we deliberately named it the Sleeping Realm Theory as opposed to, we were shorthand calling it the Dream Theory for a while. But I was, like, so, like, I don't want people thinking that this is just a it was all a dream and that it didn't mm -hmm. matter because that's so typical for like it's just a real common like bones for like a theory of just like but what and it's almost very tinfoil hatty in a lot of cases you know where it's just like oh man but what if yeah what if the rugrats was tommy having he was in a coma and like <laughs> <laughs> and everything was all his dream you know and it's just it's not that it is just it's hard to convey how much it's just like this is just old hat for this series at this point so yep. <laughs> uh, we just didn't really want it to be like it is just a dream it is just um it's a whole established thing but a lot of people do will like they'll take it at like a at a whatever arm's length kind of description they get of it and that's kind of the takeaway people get and i'm just like man <laughs> look i get it we don't all have time for a like nearing 500 page document but like can can we just like can we at least get like one fact right <laughs> it was like one right. of the biggest points i made immediately you'll see i like bold and underline it and i'm like please stop <laughs> uh, well that's why we're the whole time sorry <laughs> <laughs> and it's true <laughs> actually there's some crazy Kyrie stuff in here <laughs> oh my god it's just like it just goes on and on and on and yes. it goes on and on and on and on on and on and on and on and on and now there's here's and so here's the audiobook if you don't want to read it yep. we'll tell it to you so uh Basically. let's go let's do it this is the let's sleeping realm it. theory this is this also um this art all of the like major art you're going to be seeing, at least these like title cards, were all done by Canary, who is here in, at in stream, I believe. I told her to come, but <laughs> uh, Canary's art is uh, absolutely fantastic and incredible. I love Canary. I kiss her, Mwah. Um, <laughs> but I really want to please look at this beautiful title card. Ah! That was Canary. <laughs> All Canary, right there, beautiful. All Canary, there it is. Beautiful. It's so gorgeous. Mm. And that's only one of them. Only one. Mm -hmm. And there are many. This isn't just text. This is like screenshots and video clips. Yeah. And it is. Th there's so much work that went into this. It's yeah. Let me be clear a little bit on the, it is almost 500 pages. Uh, it's actually, it's not that much writing. It's just a lot of screenshots because everything, there is so much to remember in this series. A lot of it was just, Hey, we mentioned this thing that we're talking about. Let's just show you, okay? We're, we both we have to back it up with the evidence that we're not just misremembering or calling something. It's just like, here is a here is a quote. Here is a specific screenshot. Here is all of this, and it is just littered with screenshots <laughs> because we had to because we didn't want people asking questions. <laughs> we're just like, no, this happened. It's right here. Moving on. So it's really just like. The word count was at like 30k it's at least 30k yeah yeah which is still hefty don't get me insane. wrong but like that's insane <laughs> baby cat's here baby just cat. like i said he showed up 
<laughs> said that if I made the bed nice and appealing, uh, my cat, baby cat, w might actually show up, and he has. Yay! Anyway, <laughs> well, do you want to? So, do you want to start? Um, sure, I can absolutely start. Um, so let me start with these uh, disclaimers for anybody who is reading along with us. All of this that is written right here. Uh, Cage three remind and melody of memory spoilers are in here. Um, Melody of Memory is really, I tacked this stuff on, like, last night, okay? I really got to it, like, at the last second. So, like, don't worry, it's, like, way, way down there. And there's still some stuff I didn't quite finish putting in. So, it's, it's but I, it's disclaimer. Um, but, yeah, it's all, it's all spoilers. We're no, no hold barred, so just be aware of that. But if you are reading on a web browser, which I highly recommend, <laughs> uh, it even says it right here, I highly recommend you go to view <laughs> and uncheck print layout. There is no way anybody okay. could reasonably actually, like, format this giant document Wait, with screenshots. am I on print layout? There <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're, uh. Am I good? I think, I'm I think you're good. So long as I'm, there are, I'm like, good huge there gaps between things, okay. so. <laughs> Yeah, you're good. Anyway, yeah, do that. It will save your life. I cannot be bothered to fix all of this. There's, It's impossible because it doesn't translate to mobile either. None yeah. of it makes sense. Don't worry. So do that <laughs> for me, for you. It'll make everything easier. Um, so yeah, uh, here's the Sleeping Realm Theory. Uh, below this beautiful card, there is actually a link to a Spanish translation of an older version of the theory because it has since been updated several times. But it is a full translation. It's very cool that they did this. It's I remember seeing it for the first time. It was just like blown away that someone dedicated the time to like translate it and all of the stupid jokes I made and all of the stuff <laughs> in the screenshots. Like they just did the whole thing. So props to them. Um, but it is it is unfortunately outdated. So, I, but it is still there. I leave it up. It is too important not to. Oh yes. Um, Look at all so, this stuff we're gonna go through. Look at all the. Oh my god. There's a lot Woo! here. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Well, here at the very beginning, I literally just updated this before stream because there was an older version that included screenshots from the ending that aren't really relevant anymore because they changed that like a lot. So were you like, oh my god, <laughs> change the ending? Basically, <laughs> like because I was like, sure, they're gonna update some stuff. That's fine. And then they literally changed like the entire ending. Like they removed entire shots. Yeah. That was like it. It was just wild. <laughs> and I had to make <laughs> another note of that because we talk a lot about the ending at one point. Yeah. And it doesn't like ruin any of the points we made. But I was like, man, you gotta go make my life complicated. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway, Kingdom Hearts 3 is a complicated beast. Well, it's pretty deliberately misleading, at least. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was not on purpose. <laughs> um, so, safe to say, Cage 3 was met with very mixed reception. The ending feels rushed and confusing, riddled with seemingly out-of-character decisions at the last minute, while the main girth of the game can feel bloated with what seems like irrelevant Disney bloviating. While some may call that standard fare around these parts, what if we suggested that KH3 is a mischievous and intriguing mistress? What with a lot going on quietly in the background while letting you assume what you want, slyly slipping clues right under your nose? If you don't believe us, this really is nothing new and you can take the word of the director himself. Word of Quoted, God. Word of God, my dad, Tetsuya Nomura. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I believe that Kingdom Hearts 3 is truly completed when two thoughts whatever you feel from playing the game and my thoughts that I've secretly placed in the game match up together. I hope that everyone playing the game will complete the game for us. And so we set out to do that. <laughs> there you go. From <laughs> the man himself. Himself. Deluxe edition art book. <laughs> Um, this game runs almost entirely on audience assumption, so far as we can tell. It brings up points, loosely linking things together in a way that leaves us, the audience, to assume and make the logical leaps to fill the gaps ourselves. Again and again, you'll find it leading you one way, visually or narratively, only for it to contradict itself a minute or two later. This sounds like it's just bad, but what, <laughs> but what it is is pushing you to look past the surface and to test your knowledge. Now, with that established, what if we suggested that most of Cage 3 actually takes place in a dream? dream. Kinda. <laughs> <laughs> so, here was, uh, 
here's the whole like state <laughs> i like made myself laugh i when i go back through the theory i'll like read stuff that i wrote that i forgot i wrote and laugh at my own jokes and then i'm just like <laughs> <laughs> what like, oh past what? me oh you card <laughs> <laughs> um but uh let's see uh so small author statements plus credits uh so we're finally here Heary for the theory the theory cal niku that's me and gemma which is actually pronounced gemma i'm is it that's my thing yeah it's actually gemma is gemma. the actual normal yeah it is it is what i would call a soft g i suppose yes but i'm an idiot and i'm also american and so i look at this and i was like gemma all I've right always cool, said fine. gemma oh <laughs> Now so, all right, you would be both. You and me both. Anyway, uh, I will state that I know how to say the name right, but now it has become a thing, and now it's what I say. So, <laughs> anyway, um, the three of us had generally developed uh, about a week before the game even came out. Leaks were rampant, and we're very sorry. <laughs> um, we had questions, suspicions, and red flags already raised when Niku, me, the chosen wizard prophet, got the game basically the next day. Which is true. Six days ahead of release. It just showed up on my doorstep. Um, <laughs> Surprise! Uh, believe, Happy yeah, birthday. it really was. As like, quick aside, the uh, game showed up. I had a box just sitting on my bed. And like, I wasn't expecting anything for a bit, right? So I was just ignoring the box. And then when my roommate came home, I was just like, you gonna open your package? And I was like, is it for me? Right? Because <laughs> it's like, I share my room with my partner. So it didn't necessarily have to be mine. Right. But then like, I went and like, I go to, I see, I'm like, it's from Square, and I'm really confused. And I go and I open this box, and as I open it, I have, because I got the big deluxe edition with the toy form Sora and everything, right? So I open it up, and then I just see toy Sora staring back at me. Uh, and I, I'm like, paused, you know? <laughs> I was just like, maybe they just said the figure separately right and then i pull it away oh and there's God. the game and as i like <laughs> lift out like <laughs> everyone started screaming <laughs> so like i got the game and beat it before it was released in japan because of whatever like wow. weird mix-ups when they shipped everything so there you go um <laughs> anyway what was it uh where was i um, believe us when we say we had a lot of time to parse through the material, flip some stones, and ponder life's greatest questions. Once we realized we had something wildly and almost suspiciously rock solid, we gathered the small amount of scattered people we'd been talking to about it, and with teamwork and friendship, put this stupid long document together. <laughs> for you. For the people. Uh, we released this before the Ultimania came out to try and test what we found against whatever came to light from the book. We'll see as things go, and as new info gives us new, gives us new context. So for the time being, please enjoy Mr. Nomura's wild ride. We're strapped in, and we can't get off. And then edit. The Ultimania has since come out and pretty thoroughly translated and have since added, uh, and we have since added any new found info. You'll see these added accordingly and labeled as Ultimania updates. Um, then I had another update. And this is where I made myself laugh. It's like, with one day before the DLC Remind, I, Niku, am making some final updates and adjustments. A lot has changed or updated over the years since we first released this theory, and the splash it made in the fandom here and overseas was really something to behold. Just the fact that it could reach so many people and all the kind messages we received made everything worth it. So here's to one last hurrah before we hopefully get all our answers. Also, <laughs> hopefully I didn't <laughs> screw up the flow of the entire theory. It's 4 a.m. <laughs> I am sorry. And then... <laughs> the next update, following a pattern, I have updated this a day before the next game release, Melody of Memory. It's 3 a.m. this time. I call that an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I did it. I did it. I got I got one hour on my run, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, And then here are the credits uh, we wrote. But I we also, nothing, every chance is an opportunity to write a joke. So it's, uh you know, in here. So I have to bring some stuff up. Uh, I guess, also, I guess I would consider, quote unquote, I am like the director. I outlined and like fixed up most of it. And I guess I wrote the majority of it. But I always feel awkward like saying that because I'm like, well, other people helped. But I'm like, I yeah. can't deny it. I wrote like. No, you have to take credit for that. They would something. all want you to take credit for doing the majority of the work. <laughs> I just always worry. I'm just like, sure, sure. It wasn't just me, but it was most, like, most of it was me. So and it's still, so anyway, um, uh, we, me and Cal wrote so goddamn much and organized everything. 40 Ways to Sunday. And then there's Gemma. Baby cat, hi! Sorry. <laughs> um, Gemma uh, wrote, but did the first timeline graphic, we'll see. And most importantly, 
our GIF wizard. So <laughs> all of the GIFs were made by Gemma. Nice. And even last night, I was like, Gemma, I need a GIF, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I think, well, most of this is just like, people helped, did the yeah. thing. We have people, we have links to them in the document. Um, <clears throat> but I specifically want to bring up um, at the bottom... Uh, Blanket Horn, who is our friend Sarah, but not Sarah Kippen. There are two. <laughs> anyway, but it's just like uh, input feedback and chicken little enthusiast. I'm not going to explain it, but I want it to be verbalized. <laughs> and that's it. That's all. Okay, I just want to I, point that out. <laughs> I believe you. Thanks, someone's got to, I mean, if there's a character, someone stands it, right? Yeah, so. exactly. And I mean, you know, big fan, big chicken little fan. <laughs> Anyway, <clears throat> um, run down, uh, we're going to run through the summary of the whole theory first and foremost, then elaborate on what we've set up. After that, we'll go into all the other signs that back it up. Uh, it's just so you have context to apply it to as you go, so don't worry if it's a smidge confusing to start. There's a lot behind it. There's a lot. Boom. Yeah. Don't worry, it's all, not all text. There's, like, pictures and GIFs and videos yes. and everything in here, so we're just, we're just beginning. Yes, exactly. I, you gotta know that, like, me big adhd i definitely wrote it in a way that like i could actually write it but also i very kept it in mind to be like is this readable could i sit down and read this yes good then we then we're doing it right <laughs> so it's very like broken up and like i tried to make it as easy to read it as possible so <laughs> adhd safe exactly um Okay, well, I guess I'll continue. No problem. I like to read, so <laughs> I I can read at any point you want me to. Okay, well, what totally um, up to you. Um, I mean, do you wanna do you wanna read? Do you wanna start? I could start. Okay, go for it. All I think right. that's fun. Let's well, here trade we go. off. <clears throat> Let's do it. Here's the theory itself. To put it simply, Kingdom Hearts Three is on its second timeline. An entire first timeline of events has happened, and what we play is the second go around. The second timeline up to a point takes place within the sleeping realm or what's known as the still relatively unexplained unchained state. In other words, some form of dream. We're not claiming it was all a dream, which would have right there. <laughs> Sorry, not claiming it was all a dream and doesn't matter. It's not what we're saying. Which would imply that it didn't happen or matter. Physically visiting dreams and sleep, even data, are pre-existing concepts established in the series prior. Consider it like multiple forms or tiers of reality. And now we have unreality fiction, right? <laughs> they just keep adding keep going. more. <laughs> what we're saying is that this functions more akin to an alternate timeline. It mattered and it happened. Basically, Sora and the gang have engaged in what's known as world line hopping. And both Riku and Kairi play pivotal roles in making it happen. Stop me at any time. Anything you want to comment? I on, will say that I had to put the Riku and Kairi part because so many people walked away thinking that like it's like we talk a lot about Kairi, and I was like, this would be so interesting if this happened for Kairi. But a mm -hmm. lot of people, I guess, a specific subset of people, really took it as like we really hated Kairi mm -hmm. for some reason, and I'm like. I am tr I am trying desperately to tell you that she is equally as needed in this whole scenario. It's so important. So yeah. like I really had to be like, guess what, guys? They're both all of them are important. <laughs> Why Which... not both? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my one. I was like, please, please, if you're gonna get anything from this, know that they are like both necessary to yes. making yes. this whole thing happen. It's not trying to favor one character. It's not trying to write off one character at all. No. I did my best. <laughs> so to start anyway, so to continue. start Sorry. things off, the concept of dream worlds was introduced in the aptly titled Dream Drop Distance. Within this game, Sora and Riku are tasked to travel to worlds trapped within sleep after falling to darkness. We're proposing something broader and so deserves some clarification. Oh, here's our our first picture, Yen Sid. <laughs> Yen Sid, my in man. <laughs> oh, dream drop. You, you beast. <laughs> dream worlds are worlds that fell into darkness, into sleep, and never fully woke up. 
Their hearts, the world's heart, dream of the time before and up to falling to darkness before starting over. This creates a kind of conceptually comatose time capsule of a specific place at a specific time. The worlds themselves have been freed of darkness, but a part of them that still slumbers and cannot return entirely to normal until awoken. This is the case of the worlds we visit during dream drop distance. The sleeping realm, as we propose it, may just be what's referred to as the yet fully, yet fully explained unchained state. But when first making this theory, we knew the situation to be different from that of simply a dream world. But characters were able to do things established only within dreams, hence the sleeping realm. As we understand this state, it's more like a container of these dream worlds, or at least a mass application of the effect. The sleeping realm seems to be a bit more conceptual in application than a physical place like the realm of darkness or the realm of light. It's more a state of being within things. It particularly seems to coincide or intermingle with darkness, as darkness holds our sleep, sleep holds our dreams, and dreams hold our memories. Another Another difference between the sleeping realm as a whole versus dream worlds is the inclusion of heartless. Dream worlds specifically can't have heartless in them, as Yen Sid explains. Now, who's going to do the Yen Sid impression? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. Uh, (laughs) They still sleep, cut off from all outside channels. Not even the heartless can enter. But these sleeping worlds are said to have their own manner of darkness. (laughs) (laughs) You have the little little butt. (laughs) The little nightmare butt. (laughs) (laughs) These are dream eaters. There are good kinds, spirits, and bad kinds, nightmares. In the sleeping realm, however, heartless can, can exist. Within a state of sleep, we've seen various appearances of heartless in Dives to the Heart and Union Cross. These exist within sleep and have been shown to contain heartless. Moving on, time and fate as we understand it are hard locked into place. If something is fated to happen, it's unavoidable and will absolutely guarantee, bet your bottom dollar, come to be. (laughs) (laughs) Continue. (laughs) You can move through time, but time itself is immovable. That was not my young Zayn Orton impression. (laughs) That's okay. (laughs) The only way we know of to avoid faded events is essentially going to an alternate timeline or world line where these events aren't destined to occur. Same world, slightly different fate. Unlike a dream world, an alternate world line is an entirely new timeline it continues past when the faded fall to darkness occurs simply because it wasn't faded. We're about to chart you up a condensed exa- <laughs> Wait, hold on. This is snarkier than I was reading it. We're about to chart <laughs> we're about to chart you up a condensed example, buddy, and have we got a ride for you or a train metaphor if that's what you're into. <laughs> I'm so glad. Here, I let me let me read World Lines for Dummies TM. <laughs> <clears throat> all aboard the elaborate train metaphor. So imagine you're riding on a train. The train is destined to follow the tracks, right? This train cannot change the tracks, and just like fate, it can only follow what's laid before it. At the end of these tracks is a broken, rusty death bridge that's hungry for trains. <laughs> Your train! This track is the first world line, destined for failure from the foretold and fated fall to darkness. To circumvent this fate, we need to switch tracks before we hit the bridge. So we fell off the rusty death bridge once. Timeline one, okay, right? This Oops. is this is the bunk timeline, um, and miraculously got to do a do over. Timeline two, where we are at. We are now placed on a kind of dummy timeline, a do over made of dreams, until we hit that faded point. <clears throat> and this time, there's an actual rail switch. Uh, hitting that switch and effectively switching tracks is switching world lines, where we carry on happily, completely avoiding a terrible train accident. This is what happens between Kingdom Hearts Key and Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, albeit a bit less train metaphory. In Kingdom Hearts Key, the browser game, 
uh, or Kingdom Hearts Key, the browser game, was the story of your player character going through life in the age of fairy tales, leading up to the Keyblade War, and then dying, basically. <clears throat> Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, the mobile phone game, is actually a sequel where your player character unknowingly lives the same life again, but within a dreamy, literally, new world line where the Keyblade War doesn't happen. They hold vague memories of the terrible things they went through the first time around that get written off as nightmares or forgotten about entirely. In Key's, uh, in Kingdom Hearts Key, Ava's mission, her whole running plotline tasked to her by the Master of Masters, was to prepare the Dandelions for the new realm that they would be traveling to. <clears throat> and Master of Masters. Mom, good old mom, okay? For yeah, shorthand, mom. calling a mom. <laughs> I want you to go to a completely separate realm and experience for yourselves an age of no tragedy. We know now, uh, we now know that what Ava, Ava, <laughs> Ava's describing, <laughs> um, <clears throat> when she outlines this plan to Ephemer, uh, is the process of worldline hopping. <clears throat> right now, what I'm asking of you is the preparation for the other world. Very soon, I will have all the members of the Dandelions migrate there. There, I will have... <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Ooh, I got some fun stuff in my throat. Anyway, there I will have you experience the same things you did here. But that world will go on. This time, without total annihilation in its future. Like an overwrite? Yes, that's right. I will have to have the memories of the annihilation erased from the members of the Dandelions. And have the world connected to the coming age. <clears throat> Ava also explains to the Dandelions later that they'll be entering a world like that of a dream. Hold on. <laughs> I can take over if you want. <clears throat> You're good. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. There's just something that's just hovering around back there. <clears throat> um, after this, when that conflict breaks out, I want you to not participate in the battle and instead depart for the outside world. You will relive things you have already experienced, only in a world just like a dream, in a space separate from here. So the idea here is that you live out the timeline up to the point of disaster in a dreamlike world with no memory of said disaster, to then connect to a new world line where it never happened. It is after this cutscene that she sends Ephemer off to what she refers to as an unchanged state on another plane a displaced state outside of the world lines, seated somewhere in sleep and dreams. I see. Then perhaps Ephemera, that's actually his JP name, and then we got Ephemer, mm. even though Ephemera is like the intended word, so yeah, interchangeable either way. <clears throat> then perhaps Ephemera himself spoke from within the dream. I believe he spoke to this child from another plane, a released state known as Unchained. I believe that if this child is connected to Ephemera inside their dreams, it means that they too will draw close to the other plane. Ava tells us Ephemer is within a dream, and that this connection through dreams will allow the player to be pulled into this other plane. And finally, that the Dandelions will need to go into a world like a dream to relive their lives after the Keyblade War. Um, Lushu slash Brig slash Zigbar, his <laughs> that whole guy. mess. <laughs> that guy <clears throat> describes further world hopping in secret reports 11 and 12 in, in 3. <clears throat> Yet it seems that someone has pulled the old switcheroo. One of the five is an imposter. Someone the master did not choose. They represent a virus in the program he so carefully wrote. The virus has begun a strange undertaking. A reckless plot to allow the five to escape into another world line. Surely such a thing can't be possible. We're talking about the same trick that allowed the Dandelions to transfer to other world lines after the Keyblade War. But these children are no masters. They haven't the means. Unless, of course, a certain lady of magic summoned here from the future knows more than I do. Mm -hmm. Even on a world line with no Keyblade War, peace is but a dream. In the absence of us and our master, a darkness arrived. One that shall surely lead the world to yet another demise. Amid the chaos, I bequeathed my Keyblade to one of the Union leaders, just as the Master instructed. I watched as the five were sent to another world line, at no small cost, ensuring the line of Keyblade wielders will live on. And now, Keybladeless, I must depart this land to fulfill my final task. This means ca uh, casting my own body as I had been sojourning my heart in vessel after vessel. 
as many as it takes. Oh, Zigbar, anyway. your life is so hard. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so to summarize, world line hopping entails a very heavy cost slash means of making it happen. Being sent to a dream version slash kind of dummy timeline or the unchanged state. You relive your life. Traumatic memory free up to the tragedy as a do-over. Once you get to the point of said fated tragedy and move past it, it now connects to and becomes reality. <clears throat> I'll finish out this little section. And then and then it's and then it's your turn. Oh, are um, you guys ready for the chart? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Coming I up. have a funny story with that uh in a minute. Uh with these things established, here's our loose TLDR proposal of the timeline. Sora and company run through a possibly different string of events the first time in the real world. Oh, I'm so, hold on. I'm so sorry, stream. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, uh, timeline one. That's the the, the first, first go around. Timeline one. Uh, during the events of the Keyblade 2, during the events of the Keyblade Graveyard, all fall to darkness, the demon tide or otherwise, just as the prophecy had foretold. Seeing as fate tends to be hard locked into place, this will always carry to fruition. So simple time travel, like just going back and trying to fix things or do whatever, wouldn't change much of anything. It is fated. It won't change. In this first timeline, Riku still performs an act of, quote, true love self-sacrifice, which we will elaborate on later. <clears throat> um, saving Sora's heart while Kairi and the new seven princesses of heart keep Sora held together. Uh, we can't know much about the first timeline, obviously. Um, so this kind of remains open. But that's these are like key things we are that are like core to the whole thing. <clears throat> With this, Sora is able to go to the final world, the first visit, uh, and seemingly do whatever you have to to necessitate a world line switch. Um, <clears throat> five. This leads to the dive uh, to the dive to the heart at the start of the game. Now timeline two, where we the player comes in. Six, this dive marks the beginning of the tracks for a new world line, starting within the realm of sleep slash unchanged state to avoid the same fate at the hands of darkness. Seven, completing the dive to the heart then drops Sora in at the end of 2.9. Timeline two. We're, we're in this, we're in the second timeline. <clears throat> um, then uh, eight, we play through cage three. Um, we play cage three through to the Keyblade graveyard where everyone falls to darkness. We hit the final world, this, this is the second time, just as we see in-game, and Sora is given a chance to save everyone's hearts, since it isn't fated to end this way. And then 10, it's after this point we connected to the new world line, um, fated fall subverted. And for your viewing pleasure, our uh, rudimentary visual aid. I don't think I can uh, open, can I open this maybe? I don't Bigger? think so, unfortunately. Like just with how everything is like see it. put. Um, <clears throat> but it's basically, we have a first timeline, Right, we go through here the whole first faded thing of events, um, final world, and then everything goes goes. It just goes to shit. So we go, woo! We're gonna go and start over, and we have the arching over line <laughs> that goes around <laughs> to the beginning. We drop in, um, and then we it's the game we play, Kingdom Hearts three. We play through this game, blah blah blah. We connect to the new world line, um, but very important is the joke of uh. We fall, we chase everyone's hearts, we chase the lich, yada yada, and then that undoes ev basically everybody dying, as Nomura explains. Um, oh, we even have it right here, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, uh, basically we rewind, nobody fell to darkness, blah blah blah, we continue on this timeline, um, and then Xehanort gay dies after decades-long marriage dispute. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's and just that's, canon. That's, just, that's a really important fact we had to put mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um... With the Ultimania update, uh, time travel at the Keyblade Graveyard to save everyone's hearts has been confirmed by Nomura. And I did not write this, by the way. This one was Cal, and I can always tell it's Cal because it's always much more visibly spiteful. <laughs> so it's just like, <laughs> it was like, has been confirmed by Nomura. Look, see where we said the second timeline went, save everyone, time travel rewind, Xehanort gays, gay dies after decades long <laughs> marriage dispute. That's been confirmed. <laughs> Which was, like, something people brought up a lot. It was just, like, because it was, like, oh, Nomura kind of explained it a bit. But everyone was just, like, well, then disproves the whole theory. Mm -hmm. And we're, like, no, he's just saying exactly what we said. If He just is, like, directly proving what we said right. Like, we got it. Good job. Right, right. <laughs> but, like, it was just, we saw it a lot. And so when, like, yeah. Cal wouldn't put in the update, it was just, like, 
off. <laughs> like, Haha, see, see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you see, you see right it's there just, where we oh, already had I it. I mean, already, it's just like wild because it's like I've I've seen theories and 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 all all theories are valid. Like all theories are amazing, mm -hmm. especially pulling from facts and stuff. But like I've seen people like compare it to uh, oh, it happened in this game and it's a complete, it's a parallel. Like this happened in the Kingdom Hearts mobile game. Like all of this is like canon. Like the the, the yeah layers of sleep and the world line hopping and all of this mm -hmm. and and the dream rob like it's it's all canon to the kingdom hearts universe and so it's like it, it's just like applying that exact same concept that we've seen before in the series on top of this and it just i mean already like we're four pages in and like oh, <laughs> okay we're 20 of 482 but like i don't know it's just like it all it already just blows my mind it it really is just like <laughs> It feels like some like end of semester test where it was like now we're testing everything you've learned so far. Right. You remember the mobile game? You remember the the 3DS game? How about all this? <laughs> You're like, I unfortunately do. I even read all of the interviews. Oh, that was that's on the test. Oh shit. Okay, right. <laughs> the interviews are gonna be on the test. Nobody told me. Yeah, <clears throat> it's uh, and I love because like that was literally that's like one of the defining parts was like some something Nomura just said in an interview one time, and we were like we remembered this and we we're like oh no, <laughs> oh no. <sighs> all right okay, <laughs> <clears throat> um, but also fun fact about uh this little timeline graphic is that like when we first released this and like the ultimania came out like a day or two afterwards right um but because all of this information was kind of flying around at the same time uh gamma had been like rooting around on like 4chan just to see like upset reactions more or less <laughs> you know just be like all right who's mad and like what like, and somebody in earnest had like posted a picture of our timeline and was like so is this real from the Ultimania? And like we Ah <laughs> yes. And we're like, yeah, definitely. The Ultimania said, you know, that Xehanort gay dies after decades long marriage dispute. <laughs> that is canon. Totally so canon. You would be totally right. <laughs> so like that's just like one of my favorite memories yes. is just like that. It was just like, so is this like this is from the Ultimania, right? And it's like Yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> they did not read the blue. <laughs> No, no, they did not. <clears throat> anyway, um, so moving on with this little this little bit from the Ultimania, uh, the question was, uh, when we leave the final world, we are back to the point just before Sora and his friends were defeated. Why is that? And Nomura's answer, uh, the power of awakening is essentially the power to put sleeping hearts back the way they were. But the impact of forcing his friends' fading hearts back the way they were, uh, they were rewrote reality and created a singularity. Uh, the rewrite caused the chronology in which they were destroyed to have never happened. Like, because it was just, like, it just took out them having fallen to darkness, so it just never happened. So it was like, oh, oh whoop! Ooh. And then it just went back, to, went back to the start. Everything just defaulted back out. So you're like, oh, okay. But it was definitely, like, a time travel rewind because it just erased what had just happened, basically. Uh, oh yeah, here, follow up. Strangely enough, even though you can see we called it on our visual timeline, this is what everyone keeps saying debunks the theory? We called it, dudes. The Ultimania backed us up here. <laughs> anyway, that was Cal. That wasn't me, but I still, I'm just like, yeah, right. <laughs> no more of this man's brain. I mean. <laughs> My dad. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's him. Um, Let's see. Now, the rest of this is a loose proposal, like we said. So take it with a grain of salt. Details can turn out wrong, of course, but it's the best we can do with what we can understand. So what we are confident in is that the majority of the game we play is within the realm of sleep slash made of dreams. Uh, two, this isn't the first timeline of events. Three, Riku's act of sacrifice is likely the anchoring point in the timeline divergence, as in it happens both times. Uh, four, Kairi is holding Sora together for a very long time. Uh, five, the final world is visited multiple times, seen by us or not, as stated by Chirithi. Uh, the idea of a second timeline almost seems unnecessary, maybe a bit wild, but this is all completely, exhaustingly, within the confines of what the series has set up for itself. Dream Drop Distance, the same game that pulled not only the concept of dream worlds, doubles up on it by having Riku within Sora's dreams of the dream worlds, garnering us stuff like this. <laughs> dream of a dream, a twofold nightmare. 
the whole this whole journey you have been inside Sora's dreams and now darkness within darkness awaits you <laughs> and people jump on that line a lot as if it's just like it is just so much like nonsensical whatever Kingdom Hearts like bullshit but it's just like <laughs> within this you're just like oh well like Sora's asleep and he's in darkness and then Riku's in his sleep so it is just like darkness within dark it's just like all Literally. piled up basically it's it's like a twofold nightmare is a very accurate way of putting darkness it. darknessception um, yeah yeah basically <laughs> i see p reciting the, <laughs> the whole like <laughs> ansem spiel um anyway uh something of this caliber really wouldn't be anything new and with that we move on down deep into the depths and now i will let you go all right <clears throat> are you guys you following along so far i know it's crazy it's crazy i love it i love it all right the faded fall to darkness and so as foretold darkness prevailed and light expired the chess game unsurprisingly clues us into a lot of what's going on while young xehanort and young ericus play they speak of the keyblade war and its faded fall to darkness this should already clue us in to some parallels. The future, it's already been written. While speaking on how everything has already been written, Ericus talks about subverting said fate and very pointedly picks up Riku's chess piece as he says it. He says, really? I'm not so sure about that. Lingering shot on Lingering him shot of Riku's piece. chess piece. Besides, who's to say I can't change it and maybe light will prevail? Remember when we say Riku is a turning point. Now, otherwise completely defeated, Ericus takes his last remaining piece, representing Sora, and plants it squarely right back at the beginning. Because he's a cheater. No. Yeah, it's no. like, it's not over. It's like, because he's a cheater. Because he just pulls some stupid bullshit out. Okay, like, Ericus. All right. <laughs> Tardy Fleetfoot over here. <laughs> Some light comes from the past. The seven new lights that keep Sora from fading. Remember this for later. It's important that seven of them are there. And with this, we're going to leave you with a few extra notes before moving forward. This is a general note, but here Chirithi says one of the most important lines in the game. The Do I have to do a Chirithi voice? The edges of sleep and death touch, and one can't help the occasional crossover. <laughs> it's not bad really <laughs> thank you you've wandered here more than once before on your visits to the station of awakening Chirithi brings up an important fact that the tutorial world or station of awakening is within the realm of sleep what with a name like the station of awakening <laughs> Yen Sid also mentions this in regards to Riku's dive into Sora's heart as having braved the realm of sleep again haven't you already learned how to restore somebody's heart after it's been lost? Is that the same thing as the power of waking? I'm not sure, but give it a shot. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm the first time I ever did a charity voice. I'm proud of me. Wow, yay! <laughs> it's important to note here that what Sora's doing to save everyone isn't necessarily the known or guaranteed way to do it. There's a supposed way to restore lost hearts as a Keyblade wielder. Sora doesn't know what Sora doesn't know what it is, and Chirithi isn't sure the power of waking is even the same thing. So this is rife with the potential to garner all sorts of weird results, simply because we don't know the rules and they don't even know how this will go. This will take all my heart. All your heart sounds like a steep price. Mm. Uh <laughs> <I'm gonna> cry. <laughs> Here's a sleeping keyhole that he walks inside. Remember that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look for the light in the darkness. <laughs> Chirithi saying this, also important. If any of this mirrors what happened the first time around, we can believe this serves to give us a lot of answers. Not with all Now, with all this in mind, we move to the start with the dive to the heart. That rhymed also ha -ha, well done <laughs> and here's another <laughs> trick <wonderful> activated <laughs> <laughs> two tricks headed your way no ah, but here's here's more art by canary. canary fantastic wonderful beautiful everyone always yay for canary <laughs> <laughs>
really bringing a life to this document. <laughs> oh boy! All right. Um, oh we can just kind of go on and off between sections. Okay. I feel like that would that'll keep things yeah fresh. So, <laughs> um, dive to the heart. Beautiful, wonderful, uh, absorb it. In the previous games, we're led into the dive to the heart tutorial with some kind of preamble, visual, or narrative. This time, for the first time, we've been dropped into it without anything signifying how or why. It's also always ended with whoever was doing the dive waking up afterwards. So what's otherwise a strange break in form is in fact Sora's starting point for the game we actually play. There are seven hearts to save. This is, this is important. Let's remember this one and that's literally all they say. And considering what brought him here, this line certainly stands out. Usually the disembodied voice slash text guiding Sora or even Roxas through their dive uh, will give cryptic messages, sure. But it's also usually more than um, one singular line. And moving on, mirrors are rife with symbolism. So much so that it's kind of hard to pinpoint any one single meaning to, at like, to attribute. But layered meaning isn't new to Kingdom Hearts. Notably apt for a dive into your own heart, as a symbol for self-reflection and examination, mirrors can give you a glimpse into an aspect of yourself you can't otherwise see. Mirrors are also, very often, used as portals into another world, literally. Visions of somewhere far away or even a symbolic stepping into a new life. Another version of you. A whole new world. Hmm. Like, I love that this mirror just shows up and we're all like, yeah. yeah. And then, like, nobody thought twice right. about it. Like, oh, it, cool. Like, <laughs> What, look at that look at it though it's <laughs> what he's doing <laughs> <clears throat> the last one happens pretty literally sora steps through leaving his younger self behind this is great as showing uh, of several things growing up leaving behind old ways or an old worldview and literally traversing into a new parallel world slash alternate timeline <clears throat> in other words it's super loaded symbolism <laughs> After choosing your stat bonuses, we're hit with a transitional scene. And not just any scene, a shot-for-shot -shot recreation of Riku's ocean scene from the KH1, and it was used also in the KH2 intro. This is no accident, this is a direct parallel, and it is very important. If you've never seen this, can... it's insane. It is a direct remake. Yeah, like it openings. is direct shot for shot. We have some gifts later where they're like timed at the same yeah. like spots and everything. There's Riku. He's a shiny little light. Riku's important. <laughs> Sora, reach for the light. He run. Uh, the ocean slash water has always been a symbolism. Uh, symbol. What, what the fuck? <laughs> symbolism. <laughs> it's always been a, has always been a symbolism. No, okay. Wait, watch. I can fix this. You it's got always it. Symbolism for darkness. I wonder if it did. Ha -ha! Yeah. Live edit. Anyway, has always been symbolism for darkness within the Kingdom Hearts universe. To the point that being in literal darkness is shown to be like water or drowning. And this time, Riku is replaced with light. The literal light within the metaphorical darkness. This is a good time to remember what Chirithi said just before sending Sora off. Which is, look for the light in the darkness. But... Uh, Sora fights against the waves before being forcibly pulled away in a reoccurring example of what the heart, literally as he's in his own heart, wants versus fate slash outside forces pulling you away, which is something we will get back to down the line. Um, the waves pull him away, and as he tries to follow, follow Riku's light, he ends up in the final world. Uh, the KH1 visual parallels continue. After Sora's done with his spin wash in the ocean, <laughs> Riku's light leads Sora to the surface of the water. And you can see it's it's literally like the gifts. They they are the same. They are the same. the same thing. Except for instead of Riku, it's a light. light in the Can't darkness. It's more direct than this. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you have any doubt that Riku is the light, which is a theory in itself. Mm hmm. Which is obviously the one it was like people the biggest problem people had with the entire theory was our proposition that riku is the light despite very direct direct <laughs> symbolism like it's not a stretch it's right here but it's like that and then just because of that also took anything said about Kyrie was like we just didn't like her and it's just yeah. like they're both important very important actually <laughs> but please <laughs> Look with your eyes. I'm begging you. <laughs> We're not, like it's not a reach. It's right in front of you. It's literally right here. I don't know how it could be more clear. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, 
Um, so breaching the surface brings Sora to the final world, the last stop before death. Chirithi mentions that the edges of death, the sleep and death touch, and one can't help the occasional crossover. So we have more of the same continuing. It's he has like the same like shakes and the. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and who is it that greets Sora when he breaches the water? In Cage 3, we get this guy. This guy. In Cage 1, we get Kyrie. <laughs> uh, now that you mention it, that strange watery substance sure looks familiar. Hmm. There's, and we there's see, that and we guy. See, and we go down. Ah. And... Sorry, wow. I can't put both of these on the screen at the same time, but oh, yeah, look, look at those textures. Wow. Something very similar. Very interesting. Just just an observation. It's simple and clean. Just, it's very just it's right there. We're just <laughs> working with just what we got. Making an observation. Mm-hmm. Um continuing. Uh, obviously, we can't make any hard claims. Nor do we want to. We don't know the facts about world line hopping or what the price would entail. But Kyrie and her connections with this incredibly unique, incredibly strange dark side shouldn't go ignored. Take it with a grain of salt. We're just connecting the dots that we can see. A lot of these like dissenting sentences I had to put in because people were so mad yeah. that it was just like, look, I don't know how to make it more clear that I we are just connecting dots. Okay, right. this stuff is here. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so considering the dive to the heart takes place after everyone has fallen, Sora is attempting to save them all. He's taken to the final world, the last stop before actual death, only to be led into this interaction with a Kyrie scene. Kyrie herself is later seen made out of the same substance, missing her heart entirely. Uh, seeing as she's made entirely of light, she couldn't make a heartless. So as far as we know, or so far as we know, no darkness to overtake her. But this dark side isn't actually made of darkness. It's made of water. Water, a series long representation of darkness, and importantly, a representation of Kyrie, whose name means sea. Doesn't have to be the connection, but it is. Right. Might as well toss it out there. The dark side itself is even called into question. Its origin and look a mystery. Like in game, it's like, why does this dark side look so weird? And then the description is just like, why does this dark side look so weird? <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, it means mm. something. It's not just like, hee hee, this was fun. It's like, right. there's something, there's a mystery here. But like, <clears throat> the dark side, uh, a colossal heartless that arose before Sora in a land of endless sea and sky. It looks different from other dark sides Sora has battled with. But the cause remains a mystery. So, direct in right game. There. Um, so, is this Kyrie's heart trapped in the final world, the brink of death, where they all were but a hop skip moment ago? Is she within a pseudo heartless, like a guy's? Is it a possible Shion situation by means of a forced fight to pay a supposed price for world hopping in an attempt to save her friends? We honestly can't say as it stands, but it's certainly. Something to think about. Keep in mind, especially when I think about the like pseudo heartless something or other and things that happen in Remind, but we'll get there. <laughs> um, Ultimania update. Now that the main interview with Nomura has been translated, it's confirmed a very important thing for this theory. Um, which was, yeah, this was a direct statement that like, uh, let's see, the final world is a place very important to the story appeared in the game, but what kind of world is it? The answer being, it is a place where those just a step from death arrive, connected to the station of waking. Um, up until now, the station of, well, I get station of awakening. Um, anyway, it has always, uh, was always a dark place where the floor was made of stained glass, where the condition of the inside of one's heart could be shown. But in this case, I made the final world a place where I could show that more concretely, a place similar to a portal to people's respective hearts. Within the game, it's said that sleep and death are intimately linked. So if one's heart were in a state of sleep and they found themselves in the station of awakening, uh, the idea is that if they moved on from there, they would find themselves in the final world. Um, which was just clarification that it was like, the final world is linked to sleep. Like, a lot of this is all like explicitly linked to being in a state of sleep. So... Uh, what this says, basically, is to arrive in the final world during the dive to the heart. In the first place, your heart should already be in a state of sleep. Nomura has confirmed before the first dive to the heart we see, at the very start of the game we play, Sora is already in a state of sleep. So we literally start the game with Sora in a state of sleep going, and we never see him technically come out of it either. So, there you go. Um, 
it would be after this dive to the heart that we are placed in the potential new world line, where instead of just falling to the darkness of prophecy, Sora's given the chance to dive down and save everyone. All seven of them. And not a single one is Kairi. So it was, you know, remember that we start the dive to the heart, and all we are told is that there are seven hearts to save. Yep. So later, when we actually do dive down and save everyone, we do save exactly seven hearts. Um, but then also notably, uh, Kyrie is not among them, and that's something to keep in mind. So keep all of it in mind as you go. It's like layer upon layer upon layer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there is one thing. There was an update I wanted to put in, so I'll just state it. Um, that at, during the dive to the heart, when you first show up, um, it was just something I didn't get around to writing, unfortunately. But um, when you first show up in the final world. Uh, and Sora pops out of the water and he, and he shakes like a dog and whatever. Um, it shows the sky and the sky is very cloudy. It's all cloudy and gray and everything. Um, and then the clouds very rapidly like reverse and then it goes back to a bright sunny day. And so if this is a point of like, and we're rewinding the timeline <laughs> and we're doing it over, we're starting a new fresh little baby boy um that was like something that really stood out because otherwise it's like what is what is this here for but like other examples of like time traveling very fast is specifically shown in clouds being sped up even within the intro and it's mm -hmm. just like okay and time passed and the clouds are like <laughs> we're like whoa, whoa. <laughs> but anyway there's just like that happens and i think that's just like an important note of like hey it is shown to be like everything is dark and dingy and then suddenly everything very rapidly brightens up and this is what we're proposing is like everything's getting restarted more or less mm -hmm. so anyway all of your, this is going to be on the test all of it's on the test all at the end <laughs> anyway now it's your turn all right we are to kingdom hearts 2.9 <laughs> it's great. great thanks nomura <laughs> Big joke aside, this is when the game explicitly tells you that Kingdom Hearts 3 hasn't actually started yet. Before we even get to the actual KH3 title screen, we have an entire first world, Olympus, and Riku's first scene in the Realm of Darkness. It's important to keep in mind that these two things are happening at the same time. So what do we see of Sora and Riku? The two of them in states of transition. Their old clothes, old hair, right before the trajectory of their journey changes. It's a solid and helpful dividing point pre and post drop. But it also serves as a means to set up an important plot point, the power of love and the strength that comes with it. In Olympus, Sora is looking to regain his strength that he lost, just like Hercules did in Kingdom Hearts 2. Hercules regained his strength in the moment he risked his life to save Meg. You were feeling down and out. How'd you get your strength back? When you jumped in and saved Meg. Hmm, that's tough. All I know is that she was in trouble. Suddenly, I wanted to save her with all my heart, but... Bonus clarification, self-sacrifice. I was able to save Meg's life because I was ready to risk my own. With Riku in the Realm of Darkness, we get some very important character motivation. His love for his best friend, Sora. <laughs> This is my Mickey voice. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. No. <laughs> you. I think it's because you finally found inside you that special strength to protect what matters. Sometimes you care so much for somebody that other feelings disappear. And then there's no room for fear or doubt. <laughs> I love just the <laughs> shot. <and> he's like... <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Stares at... Komeda looks at hand. <laughs> Strength to protect what matters. Asterisk. It reminds me of a promise I made. This is vital in regards to the timeline as Riku's self-sacrifice, fueled by his love to protect the person most important to him, is pitiful for the timeline to diverge. Every act or example of true love, whether it be familial, romantic, platonic, what have you, within Kingdom Hearts 3 is followed by revival or resurrection, skirting or reversing death entirely. It's this act and its results that are necessary, and since this is established pre-drop, it means that Riku's sacrifice is available to happen whenever, real world, second timeline, or otherwise. Here's a translation note, very important <laughs> translation note. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> It's important to keep in mind that in the original text, in this case, as Riku's feelings are painted even more explicitly clear and how they're about a singular cherished person. It's that you've grasped the strength to protect your important or cherished person, isn't it? Strength to protect the person I cherish. More importantly, life being separated from the person I cherish would be empty. While they even use the exact same phrase, Taisetsu Nahito, important, treasured, or cherished person, Herx got translated appropriately to person I love most. In English, Riku's tried to stick to a pre-established phrase despite the fact that its changing is supposed to be a sign of growth for him specifically, a development of priorities, if you will. In Birth by Sleep, he accurately says the strength to protect what matters. He's five, it's general. In Dream Drop Distance, when waking Sora from slumber while answering questions about what's important to him, and all the canon answers being about Sora, unsurprisingly, the phrase is appropriately upgraded. It goes from stuff that matters to stuff that's precious. So now here in Kingdom Hearts 3, the specification of it being a singular precious person is on purpose. In Birth by Sleep, Riku's Daiji Namono, Important Stuff, DDD Riku's Taisetsu Namono, upgraded the importance but not the object, KH3 Riku's Taisetsu Nahito, upgraded importance held but narrowed to one person. Ultimania up- In an Ultimania update, the Ultimania actually goes out of its way to explicitly state this growth on Riku's character page. I want to become strong enough to protect the things that matter. Roughly 10 years later, after many twists and turns, he has finally obtained the strength to protect the person who matters. (laughs) Good for him. Good for him. It's great. Good for him. Good. Oh, that development, that character growth. Mm -hmm. This is important simply because these scenes are the parallels drawn between them are purposeful. They're not only bundled together in 2.9, the scenes follow literally one right after another using the same phrasing, a phrase they use a lot throughout the entire game. Later, they can, they, they're they connected again during Sora's dive to save everyone's hearts, Riku's being found first in Olympus. Do you want to take over here? Is this another section? Yeah, all right, let's do it. <laughs> Woo, you guys got, I got all that? Some, all right. I got some dinner but like it's too hot to eat so it's just gonna sit over there okay. for a hot moment uh hot moment is i couldn't <laughs> decide to say moment or minute <laughs> anyway <laughs> the drop so if both sora and riku's segments are happening concurrently when and where do they drop into sleep luckily riku's is incredibly easy to spot after all his hair didn't change because the heartless were hungry and look at his beautiful oh we're just, eyes. we're just gonna look at his eyes look at those oh eyelashes uh, and it, it is quite literally Mickey saying, Riku, wake up. Right. This is my favorite part of the entire theory. This I cannot <laughs> tell you how much this blew my, this whole section blew my mind when I first you, read it. You would be like, shocked oh my God. to find how many people didn't even realize his hair changed. Like, really? so many people. Yeah, you would think, but it's not wow. even like, I don't think it matters. It was a lot of people didn't notice that his hair changed at all. Wow. It's incredible. The the amount of like the everything coming out of the woodwork that I gotta see people reacting to this. I'm yeah. Like, really? Are you guys <laughs> what? Didn't notice? Oh my Ooh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> like any and every example of starting up in a dream slash sleeping world, you start by waking up. And for Riku specifically, that is not the only sign of being in the realm of sleep. Uh, look at those matching hairstyles. Wow. Mm. So as it turns out. Riku's hair would actually be one of the biggest giveaways. It's something that can so easily fly under the radar since it wouldn't be the first time the series changed his hair without much explanation. Starting Dream Drop Distance, his hair was cut short off screen at some point, but changes to an even shorter look pretty distinctly when he's in the sleeping realm. And there are these nice handy dandy comparison images. Uh, His Dream Eater hairstyle is pretty much uh, exact in cut and shape to his new Kingdom Hearts 3 style. The only notable difference is being uh, a seeming extra layer on top and a bit more to the spikes in the back. It's basically like an HD layer on top. And then you can see my my little drawing of uh, I had to illustrate that it, it really I <laughs> literally just layer. took the same thing and then I was like and here's some more on top just a little <laughs> more hair because Unreal Engine 4. Yeah, basically. <laughs> 
Uh, and also, like, obviously he doesn't get, like, young. But, like, the getting young part was, like, Yen Sid. So that's not <laughs> happening this time. Right. But he's still got this, he's still got this sick-ass haircut. Right. So a hopefully helpful doodle. Uh, it's also not a small amount he lost either. Uh, I remember specifically Kippen was like, put this picture in, you put it in. Because we were seeing people be like, I can't. his hair changed? And we were like, yeah, it what? did! <laughs> so we had to show the length of how much hair was in the back and how yeah. different it looked compared to what he has now. Did like, you, this was did specifically Did you not notice his Noctis upgrade? Like, what? Yeah, I. it's surprising sometimes. <laughs> And then we also were like, and also look, here he is. They're there at the in the dream drop. And Esmeralda's here too. <laughs> hey. Um uh, otherwise the hair sweeps on the side in the same oh blue, I can't read suddenly. Otherwise the hair sweeps on the side in the exact same way. His bangs are the same, and his side uh wefts in front of his ears are the exact okay. same shape and direction, which they just kind of jut like down and kind yeah, of forward. Do. Um, which is very distinctly different from his other longer hairstyle. Like, it's so funny we had to write all of this out, but it really was just like, people didn't know at yeah. all. So we have to like, here's the picture example, like a kindergarten class, and we're like, you see his hair is short in the back, and he's got this same, wow! <laughs> and all the kids, and they clap, and we're like, yay, yay! snack time! Anyway, um... <laughs> Uh, it's also never brought up either by either Riku, who doesn't react to it, or Mickey, who doesn't react to it, but does comment on his broken keyblade. Uh, bonus points for the fact that later, Axel slash Lee uh, distinctly comments on Kyrie's changes in hairstyle, which shows that characters in World would typically notice details like this, or at least you would think. Um, there's the but hair. When does... Yep, there's the hair. There she is. You cut your hair, too. Hey. And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, But when does Sora drop? Well, we don't actually see him drop specifically, but we do see an overlap point. Uh, it tends to go forgotten since it's so early in the game and happens very suddenly, but it's at the last possible second we see of Olympus as a world. Right when Zigbar goes to say an important phrase. And he's like, may your heart... A <laughs> uh, uh, loud noise and hard cut to black. <laughs> There really aren't any other scenes like this to speak of, nor is there an actual explanation for it either. The sound that plays as it cuts off is the same as what we hear before Riku passes out, uh, though Riku's scene is quieter overall, uh, both then leading to the two black screens. It's kind of, the sound is kind of like this, zoom, and then it like cuts off, Yeah. Um, which there are more examples later. There's, there's a video you. here of it. Yeah, there, there is the video. Uh, that Xanthi so kindly made for us. And I remember because Xanthi was like, I'll make a comparison video. And we're like, okay, cool. That's fine. And then like made this whole like professional looking like thing. And we were like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, Riku scenes give us the added bonus of an empty echoing sound when dropping just like in Dream Drop Distance. In fact, you can listen for your dang self right down here. <laughs> There's a video comparison, Uh, which those following along, you can just click through. It is a link. Uh, but it's definitely, like, easier to hear it with headphones. So, if you would like to play the video... I can... Wait, where is... Click the actual picture. Oh, There should be a video. I don't know how this yeah. one to be. Let's see. Ooh, it was professional there video. We go. Yeah. As it takes a Doing moment. Doing it live. It might take a moment if, like, more than one person is trying to watch it, so... Nice. Nah, YouTube. YouTube. Oh, no. This is a Google Drive. Yeah. Oh, we were uh, man. working with what we had. Yeah. I immediately like, dropped See, the, the thing with Zigbar, like the cutting him off in the middle of the sentence, so, like, even with, like the first time I played, I was just like, what? I was like, yeah, that is yeah. the weirdest, most disoriented. I was like, what? Like, you don't just do that. Yeah. And it I've just seen goes people totally be like, oh, it was just a design decision. I was like, what? that's not for what? Like, what for purpose? what reason? What is it telling us? What, what? There's no reason to just cut Zigbar off in the middle of a sentence. Like, I like that, like, oftentimes stuff like that is, like, said as if to, like, write off the potential it could mean anything, which right, is, like, right. of all series, why wouldn't, like, right. something that's, like, blatantly strange and questionable, like, it's like, well, it doesn't oh, mean anything. I and you're just like, did it. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> like, why write it off? Right. Like, it's Kingdom Hearts. It's not I'm, hurting I'm, you. Like, what? There was an X on a t shirt and it was a plot point. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> you okay? can't dismiss anything in the series once. Basically. After Dream Drop, basically. <laughs> that X on also, your stop shirt. Stop being a wet blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. Oh my god. All right. I'm, I'm just going to turn that play. down and let that load in the background. Oh, here we go. For some reason, this this is working. Here we go. Hold on. Here we go. All right. Some similar audio cue. Here we go. Hold on. Let me read that for you. KH3 is a dream world theory. <laughs> Early title. <laughs> Riku drops yeah. into a dream concurrent to Zigbar's line in Olympus. Note the similar audio cue, visual drop comparison to DDD, and Repliku Zigbar's dialogue cut off. So you're listening for this drop, this like, whoosh, like whoosh sound effect. You'll hear it. Yeah. You might as well, I guess, leave it kind of like loudish. Yeah. May your heart. Whoosh. <laughs> Who are you? Uh. Sleep. Jou. Jou. Sleep. Who are you? Uh. Your heart. Oh. Sleep. <laughs> Nighty night. There you go. Sleep. Sleep. There you go. Just, just observations. Mm-hmm. Uh, was the voice ever confirmed who it was? That was like replica. Replica. Talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, where was after that? Okay. <clears throat> so not only do we have a visual and audio cues lining up, timeline-wise, it matches up too. We have few other examples of seeing any two events happening concurrently like Olympus and the Realm of Darkness to begin with. But this and Riku's drop, both leading to either party heading back to Yen Sid's, times out perfectly as well. So basically they both show up like right as they're just like, okay, world ending. And then like these weird things happen and we know that they're happening at the same time. So it's like, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> Sleepy mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. And then KH3 for realsies this time. Or not. Kinda. <laughs> so hitting on this point, moving forward, we're definitively in the sleeping realm. If everything else wasn't strange enough so far, here's something else a little peculiar. Credit to Ems for pointing this out. This Below was really... <laughs> this, is... this was not a fun time after this was brought to no. life. <laughs> It was oh, it was boy. really like not cool of like a lot of people like even like creators and stuff I saw were being mean about it. <laughs> it was like shocking, oh, honestly. Geez. The amount of like backlash because it was yeah. like Ems pointed it out and like pointed it out to us and we were like, "Oh no, this is this is really unfortunate unfortunately pertinent to exactly what is like going on in the document right now." Mm -hmm. And um really caught like everybody caught wind of this and it was going around and people were like freaking out because like well yeah it's fucking it's kingdom hearts it does this yeah. kind of weirdo shit all the time all the time so it was like yeah it was very like exciting to see but people were so harsh and like harping about it and just being like it's just the gradient you're you're all so desperate and like like i said like i even saw some like creators that are like i was like surprised to be like man that's you don't gotta be saying this stuff because it was like right. mostly just kind of mean-spirited i guess so it was like yeah like, why <laughs> this whole section if you don't, don't see a lot it, of like fine like yeah you gotta be but mean it's, like, it's it. also like it is just kingdom hearts of all series right. you should be well familiar that this stuff happens so you'll see in in this whole section yeah <laughs> there was a lot of like please just listen for a second okay just give it a chance and then like other stuff like talking just about like look there is proof there is all of this stuff but like please just don't tab out the second you read this right because people very much did like 
seeing reactions of what people were saying and stuff, they they get to this and they're like, oh, I can't believe they brought up that stupid logo stuff. And I'm like, why is this like the one thing right, that everyone's why? losing their gourd over? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> of everything else, like, <laughs> calm down. Yeah, yeah. So see that, it for the potential. For Don't just immediately <laughs> write it off as, oh no, it can't be something. Like, yeah. At least open your mind to the possibility, get through it, mm-hmm. and then if you don't want to believe it, fine. You know? Yeah. But and it doesn't even have to be like every part right. of the theory is like strictly like correct in the first place. Of course. But it was really like this suddenly like blew out people's like, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. Never mind. Yeah. You almost got me. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> I just don't understand. <laughs> I really don't. Right. All right. So here's the observation mm-hmm. about the KH3 logo. The logo seems to be missing a piece. Now wait just one moment before you scoff off, as we just said. Yep. Humor us humble artists for a second. We're going somewhere with this. So this guy right here. There's a. You like my very well drawn arrow? Yes, (laughs) I I love it. It's perfection. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) there's been a lot of arguing that it's just a mistake. We get that. We do. There's a clearly a cross gradient going on. Darkness from the bottom left to the upper right, and light vice versa even if the bottom left is a dark gray and the missing corner a hard black don't worry (laughs) we're excruciatingly aware just hear us out because there's an actual precedent set for this exact kind of tomfoolery nomura (laughs) in an interview with nomura in 2016 he revealed that he hid secret clues in the cover art for 1.5 2.5 and 2.8 because of course he did it's nomura (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> no more no more us quote. There are actually two secrets about the illustrations from 1.5 until 2.8. Extremely attentive Kingdom Hearts fans might have already discovered them, but one is that Sora's movements change from sitting to standing to walking. One more is that when you line up the three illustrations, you'll notice that they show the flow of time with changes in the sky. is sunset becoming night, 2.5 is the middle of the night, and 2.8 is night breaking into dawn. Those three illustrations have a message regarding the final chapter of Kingdom Hearts 3. Great! That's great! Thanks, Nomura. (laughs) Ultimania update. Oh boy, did you think Nomura was done? Because he wasn't. (laughs) These little creatures, these little guys right here. These party people were confirmed by Nomura to actually be robed figures, sneakily placed to look a part of the building. People hidden in plain sight. What's silly is that people had been wondering this exact thing when the box art had been revealed, and that too got shot down on the same premise of reading too much into it. So that was I wrote that because I saw it with my own eyes did you? on Reddit. Like, yeah, I saw it because when it came out and someone was like, do these look like people to you? I think this is really cool. And people <laughs> were like, that's stupid. That's stupid. You're looking too much into it. And then later, Nomura literally as an aside was like, so I made the little steeples to look like people, like robed figures. Like I did that. And I was like, <laughs> are you guys kidding? And then everyone's out here being like, shut up. The logo doesn't mean anything. <laughs> just, I'm so tired. <laughs> Anyway, (laughs) do you know who you're dealing with here? (laughs) This man. So, considering everything, what's honestly more likely? The full-on deliberate animation and use of the main logo for a big-name series going unnoticed over and over again for five years? Or it being even somewhat intentional in this series of all series, Kingdom Hearts? Look at that blackness. Right there. Just black. Look at that. Look at that. Distinctly, very obviously a different... Very black. (laughs) If you were convinced it was a mess up with the text overlay, worry no more because it's there, words or not. Not to mention also being painfully, visibly darker than its mirrored corner. Also, this particular example, clear back from the 2013 reveal trailer... From the get-go, that upper right portion has been very intentionally transparent. And if that somehow doesn't convince you, the deluxe edition box showcases it very clearly where there is and isn't hollow foil. Thanks to Enix for letting us use their photos. Well, okay, yeah. But what if it what if what does it even mean? Well, ultimately nothing. 
It has some pointed uses we'll go into below, but we're not trying to use it as some key evidence to prove any one thing as it stands. What it is, though, is the perfect example to not take anything simply at face value, for you to just look beyond the surface. The willingness of this godforsaken game, series in its entirety really, <laughs> has to hide things just under your nose has been baked in since the start. We started this whole document with misdirection, as did this game with this logo. It's woven into the whole experience and whatever it may reveal in the future. As an addition, we wouldn't say this means we've only been playing 2.9 the entire time. We still played Kingdom Hearts 3, the third one, even if it's technically the 14th release in the series, but we <laughs> only played a portion of it, story-wise anyway. It's incomplete, like we're missing something key. Now that that's out of the way... Now that that's out of the way... Why a dream? <sighs> <laughs> to what end would this actually serve? <clears throat> now it's my turn to try. Yes, the natural end for those whose hearts and bodies perish together, but some persist and arrive here. Well done, yes. Thank you. Uh, to avoid death, that's the reason. After 17 years, Kingdom Hearts introduces the concept of true death when the heart and body perish together. It's said that a person is made of the heart, the body, and the soul. We know well the heart and the body. The soul, on the other hand, hasn't been a big factor until now. The soul itself is the literal life force of a person. It's the heart being cast out of the body that makes heartless, and the soul an empty body that forms nobodies. Dream worlds are introduced in Dream Drop Distance, and one of the first things they're introduced as is a safe haven, a refuge for lost souls. Joshua says as much. Something happened that brought their existence to an end. I gathered up the very last remnants of their dreams and looked for a place to give them refuge. It was then this world appeared to answer my call. Here, I thought they might have a chance to keep them from fading altogether, that the pieces of their dreams could make them whole again. Uh, Twoey spoiler warning. Uh, the Twoey cast died real and proper true deaths. It's the entire premise in their game. Like, that's pretty, pretty immediately clear. So, uh, Joshua here, looking for some way to fix this, brought them to a dream to heal. This is also exampled in Union Cross. When your player character is dying in the Keyblade Graveyard, you're visited by Ephemer and Skuld, your dandelion leader friends. This is actually a flashback, one of the memories held from the first timeline with the Keyblade War. Despite your initial choice to stay and fight in the war, they try to save you by bringing your heart into the new world line, into a dream. It's also worth noting that your player character in Union Cross, as well as Neku and his friends, remember nothing. Only the Dandelion leaders, who were entrusted with the knowledge, the Dream Eaters, and characters like Joshua with special powers, retain their memories. I see, he's a gay angel. And you're like, Meh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good old Joshi. Oh, Joshua. <laughs> hmm. oh, oh, beautiful artwork. Appreciate it. Yes, it. thank you, Canary. Beautiful Wonderful, canary. fantastic. Oh, amazing. All right, uh, your turn now. <laughs> okay, Kyrie's fate. Here we go. Kyrie, for all she sadly doesn't get to do, is one of the bigger mysteries in all of this. With a suspicious death, a missing heart, and potential symbolism at our disposal, it's safe to say she plays a bigger role than we're being presented. If there's any one reason for why a dream, it would be this. The... Pine overcoat. Oh is my here. god! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> hey man, I love your stuff. All right. Anyway, <laughs> what's up, everybody? The intro is predictive. Let's intro this with the intro. Throughout Kingdom Hearts, the cinematic intros have usually served as an interesting and artistic retelling of the events so far, usually as a means to generally refresh the story while also showcasing important and emotional scenes. That's a really long. That's sentence, a really I wrote. I'm long sorry. sentence. <laughs> That's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> the exception being Kingdom Hearts 1, where it's mostly predictive and serves as a kind of prophetic dream, seeing as it didn't have a past to draw on. The KH3 intro stinks as a recap. It's at best a watered-down <laughs> version of the Dream Drop intro, which is much better in my opinion, with a sprinkling <laughs> of chess and a spicy little dash of Xehanort. Seeing as it skips over pivotal games like Chain of Memories, ignoring Namine entirely, stopping dead before recoded, and most importantly, Dream Drop Distance, the direct lead into Kingdom Hearts 3, this intro is not a good recap. 
because it's not supposed to be. Like Kingdom Hearts 1, this intro is predictive. It serves as a narr- it serves a narrative purpose, functioning under the premise of it being Xehanort's game. It's what he's planned, schemed, and infer- interfered in over the years. We're seeing his setup. We never see any counterplay. We never see any other pieces moved aside from his own. Just what he wants and where he wants it. The key piece he's trying to get is Sora. The key piece he uses to get it is Kairi. Kairi, aware of it or not, is instrumental in making things happen. The long and short of it is, this intro shows us events to come, Xehanort's control over events, and Kairi's inescapable fate. Poor Kairi. <laughs> oh, Kairi, you pawn. Oh. Not by your own... Not, not by, yeah, no not by choice. <laughs> not by choice. Uh. <laughs> Xehanort's plan. So with this in mind, this shot, falling all the way down through every piece of the 13 Darknesses, only to find Kyrie's piece at the very bottom, sure is something. Hmm. Not only is this presented as past the board, past the pieces, all the way down at the bottom of the abyss, it's framed dead center, shining and important at the end of all of his other necessary pieces. She's important to him, or at least accounted for. Really, look at this. Look at this dive Boom. down. Well, it's a cool shot, Boom. but also it's just like, sure is only Kyrie, oh. just right at the bottom, at the very, very oh, bottom. Oh, pieces. Oh, Kyrie. Wow. Hi, Kyrie. Feeding that powerful fruit right into Sora's mouth. Hey. Yeah. Baiting really them. Just... Look at that. <laughs> Symbolism. Um, we love it. Symbolism. Uh, she's, uh, let's see, she's important for him, or at least accounted for. And believe me, this isn't the only time she's accounted for. Answer Report 11 from Kingdom Hearts 1. Opening the door to a world's heart causes its walls to crumble. These fragments are seen as shooting stars. This, this explains why these gummy blocks can travel freely to other worlds. Which I always just think is a really cool detail, to be honest. That's just like a neat little like world <laughs> thing. Um, um, I know the catalyst of this collapse, the appearance of the Heartless. However, it will take time uh, to search out <laughs> time to search out the world's <laughs> doors and to retrieve each heart. Furthermore, the doors can be locked using a keyblade, making the heart forever unattainable. I must take action before the wielder of the key appears in this world. If the princesses and the Keyblade are connected, they should resonate. I've chosen a girl. I don't know if she holds the princess's powers, but I will find out. She may lead me to the key bearer. I shall set her free and observe. Mm -hmm. Clear back in KH1, one of Ansem's reports speaks of Kyrie and how he sent her off to locate the key bearer and observe, meaning that in any capacity, he's tracking the situation. Which makes sense. You don't just launch her into space and be like, I hope that does something. And, like, have no way to follow up on that. (laughs) Not someone who is, like, a puppet master. You're not just going to send her off and then not keep tabs. (laughs) Forgot to put the baby monitor on her. (laughs) You know, he just said her. It's like, oh, no. Come back. (laughs) Um, So, meaning that in any capacity, he's tracking the situation. Then, in Dream Drop Distance, as young Master Xehanort is explaining how they pulled this off, we get a very missable hint. I also have to give credit to Claude for, like, pointing this out to me at one point, because Claude was like, well, wait, about the Kyrie thing. Dude, would that mean this? And I was like, oh my god, Claude, you're a genius! <laughs> Just, like, in passing, like, found, like, such a good thing that I was like, what do you mean? Of course it means this! This is, per- this is great! Anyway... <laughs> So a very missable hint in Dream Drop during that whole spiel. Or just young Master Xehanort's just droning on and on. And Sora's like, what? <laughs> and we're also like, what? Anyway, uh, how did he know? Sora asking, how did he know I would be here today? Xehanort being like, simple. And then just uh, young Master Xehanort hey. says nothing but simple before there's a loud noise as the door swings open to the heart of the world. And then, and then we Kyrie. have just Kyrie, and then Shoom. Sora try- yeah tries to catch her, and then we fall even deeper into sleep. All we get as an answer is Sora yelling Kyrie's name before she phases through him, and he falls deeper into the nightmare. We're not saying any of this is malicious. Again, any note of like I had to put this in was like, mm-hmm. please stop thinking that we hate Kyrie. <laughs> I'm begging you. <laughs> 
We're not saying any of this is malicious. In fact, we think she's entirely unaware of whatever plot she's a part of. Absolutely. Uh, which is just, it's true. <laughs> uh, Kyrie is an unfortunate piece caught in a cruel game. Within this game, quote, uh, the few major things Kyrie's involved in in the intro actually play out within KH3 as her few focused scenes. This paints the idea that these key events were planned for or needed to happen. These key events being the cave drawing, of which they make a very big point to show the drawing itself and then it being completed. Boom. Um, two, uh, leading Sora out of the darkness. I, this is in quotes, because that's important. <laughs> we see them in this whole this whole thing. Uh, cleverly disguised as callbacks, they just so happen to tell us exactly what she does within the game itself. Uh, following on this, Sora is freed and opens a door for everyone else to follow. Within the intro, that is. Um, <clears throat> this, too, happens pretty directly in-game, as Sora's return from the darkness results in saving everyone else. As a result. Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna um, everyone else. <laughs> Period. <laughs> no, I messed it up. Period. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Three, the final battle. Uh, the ending scene involving Kairi continues this pattern. It starts with her and Sora reuniting on the beach, a la the end of the key of age two. <laughs> I almost went key two. <laughs> <clears throat> um, finally reuniting after near constant separation, they run towards each other, only for darkness to strike. <laughs> nice shot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I okay. That shot was actually particularly hard to get because he always constantly looks like a wet, waxy baby. <laughs> And it was, like, <laughs> me trying to get any one frame that didn't look, like, awful was impossible. <laughs> so I was like, Here, whatever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> every shot this purple lightning strikes, darkness is at play, whether it's influencing Xehanort himself or indicating his influence and plan, which you see throughout the rest of the intro. Like, when Xehanort is thinking, he's, like, you know, bouncing the piece in his hand and everything, mm -hmm. and then lightning strikes, and he's and it's, like, a literal, like, aha, like, moment where he's like, oh, you know, and, like, this keeps happening in, like, every shot. It's actually really interesting to see it. Um, uh, let's see. Whether it's influencing Xehanort himself or indicating his influence and plan, it goes off here, sprung like a trap. See, they're all happy, and then it's like... And then they're like, oh no! Uh, the camera zooms out, showing them helpless, small, and still separate. Showing us the chessboard, the game he's had control over since the beginning, and how he worked to get these two pieces here. And they are quite literally surrounded. Uh, <laughs> they are literally surrounded with no means of defense. This is more or less exactly what Xehanort needs. And just like the scene at the Keyblade Graveyard, Sora attempts to protect Kairi, only to have it fall to, specifically, Donald and Goofy instead. Which is exactly what happens later. And then we and we get a Zeta Flare, and we get a whole thing. We get a Donald, no! no! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Donald, don't. <laughs> um, uh, this isn't bringing empowerment or safety to each other. This is a trap. This is a setup, and it's accurately predictive. It's further bolstered by the fact that Xehanort gets what he wants. They summon Kingdom Hearts. Um, there is something else. Let's see. I don't think it gets brought up here. Maybe. I'll, I'll wait until we're, we're done with this whole little section okay. to bring it up. Because that was another thing I like wanted to add. Um, and I didn't quite get to it. But we will move on. I'm putting okay. a pin in that at the end once we finish this little kind of Kyrie bit. So, all right. All right. Star-crossed. Continuing on in the intro, it consistently focuses on Sora and Kyrie's separation specifically. Granted, it does that for everyone as Xehanort tears them apart, but Kyrie is repeated and a major focus. Is my puppies are going to bark? Yes? No? No. Puppies! Okay, puppies. All right. Even what should be considered a somewhat sweet scene, it's still about their separation. The cave drawing, being complete, places it directly after they separated a second time at the end of KH1. And it's literal star-crossed imagery. Given Kairi's death, their following separation at the end of KH3, and even Sora acknowledging they've been constantly separated since the start of the series, much to his frustration, fate seems to have a stranglehold on the outcome of their friendship, like two star cro stars crossing paths in the night. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> the KH3 logo. 
coming back. It's coming back strong. <clears throat> Do you remember to take your notes? Remember the logo? Yeah. <laughs> um, at the very end of the intro, we're shown a group shot of all the trios. And a neat little detail, the logo coming in overlays the Destiny trio. Oh, look at right over the Destiny trio. Boom. Mm -hmm. KH3. In a concerning detail, the one strike that overlays Kyrie is missing its top portion entirely, like we had pointed out. Uh -huh. It's hard to argue that this is mere coincidence when these all seem to match up purposefully, with Riku's strike being the dark gradient topped with light, Sora's being the middle strike topped with the signature crown, and Kyrie's being light, with an entirely missing transport transparent portion incomplete. So where was her heart again? Hmm. Kyrie's death. It's absolutely toe to tip suspicious. For starters, her heart is entirely missing. True death is the heart and body perishing at once. But our one other example for actual death within the series, Strelitzia, does in fact show us her heart flying out the door and disappearing. She was also similarly struck in the back with a keyblade while defenseless. There goes her little heart. Wee! Wee! Here it goes. <laughs> and then just like, oh. woo! <laughs> <laughs> F's in the chat for Strelitzia. <laughs> Even then, it doesn't quite line up, as it's much more in line with a traditional death, complete with light sparkles and everything. Woo! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kyrie, unlike anything or anyone we've seen so far, turns into this transparent, watery substance before shattering like glass. In fact, Kyrie's bizarre Oop, transformation sorry. resembles uh, th that was that talks. was the Kyrie <laughs> Kyrie respect death music. In fact, Kyrie's yeah. bizarre transformation resembles Shion's death more than anything else. Do 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 do. Pshoo, these little watery Wee. light crystals, glass. Pshoo. Fun for everyone. Uh, <laughs> everybody start crying. Sorry. <laughs> but look at all these shattery glass looking crystals here. Okay. Both their bodies change to what seems to be that same watery substance, something like ice. Something that crystallizes and shatters with a glowing bright light. Why would Kyrie's body as a regular person behave the same as a replica's in death? All of the focus on replicas, puppets, and vessels throughout the game, but there's this one quote by Young Master Xehanort early on. This quote is talking about toys in Toy Story, beings that should have their own hearts in that world, and yet they can still be taken over by another. And that exact thing happens to Buzz, too. One heart's shadows fill the emptiness of another. See how they bring him to life? <laughs> See how they bring him to life? See I can make a move for you. <laughs> <laughs> we anyway. we know that I'm sorry if that was really loud. <laughs> <laughs> we know that after her death, Xion's heart goes back to Sora. But where does Kyrie's heart go? Where is Kyrie's heart in the first place? We never find it in the dive at the Keyblade graveyard, and we don't see it even when she dies. But we're one short. Where's Kyrie's heart? The dive in the Keyblade Graveyard shows us we're unable to save Kyrie's heart. It assumingly doesn't turn into any Heartless we've ever seen before, since she has no darkness. And because she has no darkness, she can't create a nobody by herself either. We don't see it being led by the Lich. We don't see it when she dies. It's missing, lost, before Xehanort ever struck her down. But don't worry, she's busy playing a really big part, which we'll get to very shortly. For now, and I think we need to take a quick break, but... Yes, that's not a bad idea. I <sighs> need to wash my hands very badly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know let's, what it let's is. Let's practice but... healthy geeking, everyone, as we just mm -hmm. nerd out. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, yeah, let's take, a, let's take a quick break. Quick break. So, I will be back. We'll be back. See you soon. Woohoo! 